Hello and welcome everyone to another North Basics video on this channel. Uh, today I'm gonna talk about the different hostile and neutral factions in Northgard that are surrounding you on the map. Uh, so if you're a new player you may ask yourself what are these white surrounded tiles about that are yeah have these big man or these little man on it. What are they about and how can they help me to win the game or yeah even help my enemies to lose the game. <laughs> so uh, yeah I'm just gonna tell you in this video also gonna tell you about everything that I know about the hostile factions that you definitely met if you played a few hours of Northgard. So just gonna jump into it and gonna start with the Yodna. Sorry, Yodna, how you may call them. Uh, yeah, they are just interested in food. So you may gonna trade food with them. I'm just gonna get over to a little trading post here. So you can build trade routes there. Uh, you may know that. And if you look at the food, you can trade with the Jotna. See it right here. Uh, this is not a real crazy raid. This is more interesting for the uh, uh, Goat Clan. Because the Goat Clan ha can have a pretty high raid with that. The Stack Clan can too. So shouldn't call them out there. But 100% uh, better food trade with the Goat is really crazy. And you see right here. This is a Giant's relationship. So if that, hit, uh, that hits 100%. One of the Jotna will... Uh, will add to my army. He will just have the same stats like you see here. You have 20 attack power, 18 resistance. What is, I think, the highest resistance in Northgard so far if you don't build like, okay, if I now build <laughs> shield bearer camps and take all the stone of this map here, what is quite unrealistic. Um, I think I could be able to get higher resistance shield bearers, but just in the logical way, this is the unit with the highest resistance on Northgard, so he can really, really consistent some hits. Even though, just the Jotna will not uh, help you to win the game, so you will still need some army behind him. Because, yeah, he does quite a bit of damage, but he's not able to kill whole armies himself. So, also we have the Kobolds over here. The kobolds are not as useful as the uh, Jotna, because you can just see right here, um, just in the trading sense of course, uh, they you don't get as much trade with the uh, kobolds like with the Jotna. I think the Jotna are a little bit higher than with any other faction in the whole game and uh, just a little bit higher to trade with teammates or something. Your trade with teammates is always a little bit lower than with uh, enemies. And Jotna is always a little bit higher than with your, uh, yeah, with your friends or teammates. And the kobolds are just the same rate like your teammates, and they will just rise as high. So uh, your relationship to the different neutral tiles and uh, neutral factions, of course, uh, will improve. So you see the little face goes a little bit more smiley, and after that your trade goes a little bit better. So you get more gold for getting and uh, sending the same amount of food to them. The kobolds have stats too, uh, they have 8 attack, 5 resistance, it's not that high, it's figures. Just like a villager, or even a little bit higher, yeah, the villager just has 4, excuse me there. So uh, a little bit lower than the villager, I think in the 1v1 uh, the kobold would win against the villager even though that will never happen because the kobolds don't attack and your villagers won't run in their tile. But they respawn really fast, so as... Uh, wolf clan you may find yourself clearing out those little kobolds for uh, the 15 gold you get for pillage so you always run here kill a few kobolds it will not hurt the relationship of your teammate with them what i find is quite crazy but yeah it just works like that so you can run in there uh, yeah kill a lot of them get a lot of crowns out of them and your teammate can still trade with them like there will no problem. They don't really care about that. Just, just keep on trading with them. Cool implementation. Um, you gotta watch out. If you clear tiles around uh, the kobolds, they will start colonizing it. So be aware of that. Take the tile if you want to take it just beside the kobolds. And don't clear it out like all the way before and then wait ages until you uh, will 
colonize it um, even more if you want to have a good relationship with the kobolds because after you attack them uh, yeah it will not be that easy to get them in a good mood again so yeah just with that we have the hostile f uh, the neutral factions going and we're just gonna jump to the hostile factions and you saw it all the time right uh, when the video started that I get attacked from those factions all the time so they are the wolves the wolves are highly aggressive I would say more aggressive than the uh, dragger even uh, Draugr, sorry. <laughs> uh, even more aggressive than the Draugr, because the wolves will attack you from the first, mon first months you started into. I think after two months, yeah, the hunt is open. It can start attacking you, it can start attacking you on every tile. The wolves are full aggressive and yeah, the attacks are quite balanced out, so... When I played with other players and we sat in the same team speak or Discord or anything that <laughs> in that sense, uh, we I heard that the attacks came in roughly at the same time. They were roughly the same size, but sometimes you will just be attacked by two wolves and your enemy will be attacked by four. That's quite crazy. But their stats are 10, 3 and 50. You will need two villagers to fight against the wolf. You will need one warrior to fight against the wolf. Uh, he will get out. Uh, I think a warrior can fight two wolves uh, once, so uh, one at a time. So fight against one wolf. After that, he could kill another wolf. Gotta be in summer, not in winter. In winter, he can kill one wolf roughly. I think just just roughly. So not that easy. Uh, for two wolves, you will need two warriors, but. Uh, the second one will get no damage and for three wolves you will need, need two full health warriors or you cannot really clear them out yeah almost the same stats if you uh, yeah if you get attacked it's roughly the same thing uh, you gotta look at your bonuses so a wolf will always have a little bit easier time to clear out the wolves out of there if you have this uh, sharp weapons uh, it gets a little bit earlier there uh, he will get it a bit earlier because you get to uh, you just go to Lord Tree of Weaponsmith a little bit earlier with the Wolf Clan. And with sharp weapons it's always a little bit easier to clear that out. And with your 200 fame I guess you get 15% more on outer side tiles. So that can be a little bit changing up if you clear out your own tile that gets attacked or you're clearing out the other tile. Let's switch up to the second most common enemy. <laughs> it's a Draugr. Yeah, these guys are rough, but they can be stupid. So if you get uh, get attacked by one single one, that is just melee. You can always try to uh, stay close to him, like having him in your range and uh, dodge him through your tile while your tower is shooting at him. Uh, it would be cool to be attacked right now to show that a little bit off. Uh, maybe it happens still in that game and I can show it to you. But I hope you understand what I mean. You can just take a villager, try to not get a hit off course it doesn't work if the dragger has a uh, range attack and he will just hunt you down can't do it then just run out of there but you can dodge him out you can even still take an axe throw and do the little uh, ringo ringo rosy thing around the building or something it still works but uh, there are ranged draggers on the style just like this here and it doesn't work that good anymore uh, you gotta watch out there are three different types of them not only this is a shield dragger, so he uh, dragger. He won't get as much damage from a defense tower or anything uh, that is ranged. I think uh, that's were a change that came in when the axe throw was so strong, so you couldn't do the ringer ringer rosy thing so easy with uh, the shield draggers because they will need ages to die. They are the normal draggers. Just there is none of them in here. This is a normal dragger, no shield. He has a sword. He will just get normal damage. I think he has a little bit less life. No. Nah, it's just less normal. But yeah, he will get the normal damage from towers and everything. Got a little uh, thing with melee. He just has the same stats. That's why the same resistance is right here. Uh, he has more resistance against ranged, even if the numbers doesn't say it. The damage is quite potent. Let's say it like this with 10. Uh, yeah, actually the same like with the wolf, but I always uh, think the yeah, dragon attack hurts a little bit more. Obviously because of the higher damage and resistance. They are quite hard to kill. 
uh, yeah, in comparison to a wolf. Uh, villagers do quite a little bit damage to wolves, but against dragons, you will have a problem, man. So watch out, you will need towers, even though the dragons won't attack from the first months on. So I, I would say uh, after the first winter, the dragons are free to go on your tile. Always changes a little bit with the difficulty that you use, but they won't attack you in the first year usually, so don't be too scared in there, but afterwards you will need the towers there. Uh, yeah, I think I saw one of the little boys right there, because we're switching now to the brown bear. Yeah, brown bears are hard to clear, but they don't attack you. That's cool. They will never attack you, they just chill out. Uh, you can always use them as a puffer, let's say it like this, so if you be see a bear... Ah! Now we can try it out. Go all out. All out of here. We take the villager. Come, follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Now you see, you can't hit stuff. The villager is freaking low, but he won't get a kill uh, hit in. Bang. And now we get them back. There are uh, situations where that has more use, but I think you got the hang of it. It's really useful, don't forget it. It doesn't work at wolves, <laughs> because they are way more uh, fast. So, back to the bear. Really hard to kill, I was just uh, explaining. You can use them as a puffer, so if there were a bear here... Um, let's say we are playing on hard difficulty and all these tiles are cleared. After some time, it can be that the wolves on the other tiles, or dragons even, uh, push out and regain control of that tile. And if you have a bear on that tile, so from the beginning on, uh, they won't push out on it. So it's something you can't clear. It's possible. It's not that easy in the easy uh, in the early game because you will just have two warriors, and two warriors against a bear that's not a win. <laughs> two health, full health warriors will not kill a bear. You will need to. Attack with both warriors, switch them out all the time, so uh, yeah, do the micro in there and run out with two low warriors and immediately run in with uh, one healed warrior, so you send one of the warriors, make him back into a villager of course, and send a new warrior that is healed in there with the uh, low warrior and you will usually be able to kill the brown bear, but why I say uh, directly is the brown bear generates so be aware of that don't take too much time because it could be that you don't kill them anymore if you took too much time and that's not cool at wolf 140 food so big food resource you can maybe even think about killing these things off so the other wolf doesn't get this uh, get the bear because it's a hell of a lot of resources and you don't really want to give it to an enemy so Think about that. 13 resistance. 13 resistance. Think about that. So, uh, bear against bear, and usually war chiefs in there and berserkers in there. Uh, yeah, it doesn't help that much. But just gotta say it right now. Just play it on the beta right now. And yeah, I'm not really like the skinny dude and stuff, but this just looks. This looks sexy, man. This really looks sexy. Mmm. I love that, but I, maybe it's completely because I'm coming from World of Warcraft, but I really like that. And a little sneak peek for the people that are watching right now. Uh, not gonna promote it too much. There are new war chiefs, man. They will come. There's just new, no new sound there, but here, yeah, you see him? That's the Raven war chief. Cool stuff. Let's jump to the Valkyrs. <laughs> I'm not t uh, mentioning that anymore. Uh, yeah, Valkyrs. Really, really annoying. So if you touch a middle tile, I urge you, <laughs> I urge you build a tower on it. You will, you will not hate me for this. Because if a Valkyrie attacks your tile, yeah, it's not game over, obviously. But yeah, they hit hard. 20 freaking damage. Uh, 8 resistance, not even that high. But 88 health is quite high. Uh, I'm not even that high for that type. I 8 uh, resistance is way higher than from the dragos, so your villagers will do no damage anymore. And they are pretty much dead at 3 hits. 3 hits and your villagers bye bye. So try uh, to build a tower there. Against one tower, a Valkyrie will die. Two Valkyrs against one unupgraded tower, you will have a problem. So in the late game, you will even need to upgrade the tower in the middle. That's why I 
never really want to touch it, to be honest, if I if I don't have to. But sometimes the iron just lays there and you have to. It's quite hard to kill those off. off. I can't really tell you, uh, like, you need three warriors to kill Valkyr. I would just say in the room, maybe around... Maybe around three or four warriors. Nah, four warriors. I think you will need four warriors to kill her. Don't know how it works like with the war chief, but that's not really my thing. I wouldn't really kill out all the sparkers. Try to go around them. Um, but if you go for the middle, middle kill, you can obviously do that. But this is really late game stuff. The most important thing for you to know is that if you touch the middle or some Valkyr tile, they are... I don't know. Yeah, here. Yeah. Ha I love taking big maps because they really have everything. Uh, Tor's Wrath. If you touch a Tor's Wrath tile, build a tower on it because they can still attack. It's, it's not cool. It's really not cool. Mm, I don't have the stats for the dragon right now, but let's say he has 250 health and he will wreck you. He will freaking wreck you. So if you don't have a huge army, don't attack him. He won't attack you. That's the most important thing for you. Uh, Valkyrs and tech love to attack you. Don't think just because, huh? Ah, eh, they won't attack me. They didn't attack me last game. I saw a game on easy where someone got attacked by three. Three of these bad, <laughs> bad, not boys, bad girls. Let's say it like this. And yeah, you were done. You were done, man. It's like everything got killed off that tile. You can say bye bye tile. And you have three Valkyrs on there. So more. Valkyrie uh, tiles around you that touch your tiles, so more chances to get attacked by Valkyries. You gotta attack more times of them, and the game will just over. So, really watch out for them. So, that were actually my quick little overview over the factions. Like, all the factions. The hostile factions and the not neutral factions. I hope I didn't forget anything. If I did, I'm really sorry. I hope you learned something in this video. I definitely learned a little bit more about the <laughs> about the different uh, things because I never really looked too much at the resistance and stuff. But yeah, it's all very important. You, you know, if you play the game a lot, you will just know that uh, a dragon will take less damage than a wolf, and yeah, the Valkyrie even less, and a bear will freaking tank, man, unkillable. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did so, may consider to leave a like or uh, sub to this channel if you didn't do so. So uh, when you click on a little bell, you won't miss anything anymore, I guarantee. And yeah, have a great day, everyone. I hope I didn't say too much yes in here. And have a great weekend. See you all in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs> Ciao.